Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the number one thing that will ruin your worship ministry. And before we get started, I wanna say welcome to those that might be new to this channel. If this is your first video you're watching, welcome. I make videos just like this and also guitar tutorials on a regular basis. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And before we get started, let me also say that the viewpoints that are expressed in this video are my own, they are my opinions. Um, and just some, from, from my own experience as well, I'll say that. And so please take that into consideration. If you do have any comments or thoughts, be sure to share those below in the comment section. All right, so what is the number one destroyer, the number one killer, the number one thing that will ruin your worship ministry? It's the lack of communication. So the big question is why? Why would that be the number one thing that could ruin a worship ministry? First of all, let's talk about unmet expectations. We all have expectations. Uh, the worship pastor, the worship leader, all of the volunteers, we've all got expectations in, in terms of what you as a volunteer or a teammate, team member can expect as a part of this organization and this team. And if there is a lack of communication or poor communication, oftentimes those expectations can become unmet. Additionally, we all have emotions. And oftentimes when there's a lack of communication, there can be a lot of unexpressed emotions, a lot of unexpressed feelings. And if your feelings are hurt about something, if, if something wasn't communicated right or wasn't communicated at all, that person might say, I'm not gonna talk about this or they're just going to suppress it repress it, whatever you want to call it. And then ultimately that never gets expressed or talked about. And as you might know, this can lead to gossip, which is also an incredibly deadly aspect of, um, I think, what oftentimes we all deal with in worship ministry, not just worship ministry, but teams and work organizations, just gossip in general can can be a number one killer. I would even say that that, that might be the number one killer. Furthermore, it's going to create a low morale. People on the team are going to feel as though they just, they don't really have a place or at least what they contribute is not really worth anything, especially if, if, if they're being told one thing and then it changes or if that expectation in terms of what they were supposed to do, what they brought to the table as a guitarist or as a drummer or a bass player, vocalist, whatever the case may be, and, and then like that changes, you're going to have a very big increase in low morale. The last thing here, and there's probably a, a, a tons of other things, but the lack of growth from all of that, you are going to have a lack of growth and it's going to trickle down from lack of growth in terms of your craft, your giftedness, but also in your spiritual walk as well. Again, this is just a handful of whys. I would assume there's probably several other things that we could list off here, but these, this is just a general overview as to why the lack of communication can be a number one killer of a worship ministry. And ultimately all of those things lead to frustrations. They lead to friction. It leads to confusion, hurt feelings. The list goes on and on. Again, those reasons are not the end all be all. There could be several others. If you have any other thoughts on that, let me know down in the comments below, maybe from your experience as a worship pastor or a volunteer on your team, you've seen the lack of communication and you've seen the fallout, the, the consequences and the result. And if that wasn't listed here, let me know down in the comments below. Let's move on to the how. How is it that it can get to this point, right? What are the things that, that happen in a worship ministry, a worship team or at a church that allows for the lack of communication. Sometimes it really could just be a, the top down effect. So essentially, if you are in a, a position of leadership and authority and you're under someone, say the senior pastor, or there's an elder board or a leadership team above you, and let's just say there's a lack, lack of communication in, in that system, in that team, that easily can trickle down into your ministry as well. The second thing I would say is a lack of leadership or strong leadership. Who is the leader? If it's not clear who the who the, the leader of the worship team is, you can create a lot of uncertainty, a lot of concern. You can create a lot of confusion because if people don't know who their leader is, they're ultimately going to be on a different page than what you as the leader might want them to be on. So it's very important that you as the worship pastor or the leader of the worship team is set up in a way that it's very clear that you are the person in charge. From there, if there's a lack of expectations, if there's a lack of goals even, this can ultimately lead to lack of communication, poor communication amongst the team. I would highly recommend and highly encourage anybody that I talk to that is a worship pastor or is over a worship ministry to create a system of expectations and goals where vision lacks, the people perish. 
And I've seen that time and time again. If there are no expectations and people are just going to kind of show up when they want, people are kind of just going to play what they want. There's no real structure to it. And from there, everyone's on a different page. And it can ultimately lead to that frustration, that friction, that confusion, and that disunity as well. So it's important as the leader for you to essentially take charge, to, to be that person in authority that you can assure your volunteers and your, and your teammates, your team members, that they can come to you. You're the person that they need to come to. And additionally, give them something to latch on to, especially with goals. What is it that we're trying to do here? What's our why as a worship team? If that's not there, People are just showing up for who knows why they're showing up. It's important that that element is there and it's clearly communicated. So those are just a few of the reasons as to how a worship team could get to a place where there is poor communication. Again, from your experience, what is it that you've seen? What is it that you've seen with, with your worship teams and your ministries where there's been a lack of communication? Can you pinpoint why that is? Is it that there was a lack of, of strong leadership you know, from the, from the top with the pastor or the elders or the deacons or whatever you want to call them? Was it that you maybe there just wasn't strong leadership? Whatever the case may be, may be, your experience is probably going to be different from mine, but just let me know down in the comments below. Now let's move on to more of the constructive criticism aspect of this video. Maybe you feel as though, hey, I'm, I'm the worship pastor at X church. I just feel like people aren't listening to me. I feel like I can't get people on the same page. What are some things that you can do to improve and lift that quality of communication in your team? First of all, I would say pray about it. Pray, seek the Lord, um, ask him, what is it that I can do? What is it you can show me? Where am I wrong? What can I do better? Seek the Lord in prayer. The second thing is go, go to your elders, go to your pastor, look to them and say, what can I do to help improve the communication in my team? Those I think are a little bit more across the board, but here's a few specific things that I think that you can do. This could even be just, just in general, just a, just a good rule of thumb to these things you can work on. These are things you can work on on a regular basis. Number one is learn to listen. Before we can speak, we have to learn to listen. And before you can properly communicate something, you have to learn to listen. If you're not a good listener as a leader, how can you expect your team members, your teammates to to listen to you. The second thing is ask for feedback. There may be areas in your worship ministry as a leader that you don't see that someone else may. And if you don't give them the opportunity to safely express that, they probably never will. And therefore you'll never know what it is that you have that you can work on. So create a culture and environment where people have the freedom and security to be able to come to you as their leader and say, listen, this is what I feel like is not working. And for you to actively listen and hear them say, I hear you, I, I appreciate you coming to me and, and sharing this. I'm gonna pray about this, I'm gonna talk to our pastor, and we're just gonna go from there. But number two, creating that culture where feedback is critical, I think that that's definitely gonna help increase that communication. The third thing is know your people. Not everyone communicates the same way. Some, For instance, some people really like to text, whereas some people really like to email. Some people will rather, they'd rather call you over the phone. We all communicate differently. That's just the way the Lord made us. That's just how it is. It's a great thing. But with that is an understanding that your guitar player is going to communicate different than your, your keyboard player, your, your pianist, right? And so you have to know them well enough to know how they communicate and then how you can listen to them and how you can respond to them. Because the way that you share things and say things to this person may not work with, with the, the pianist, right? You, you, you're gonna have to change the, the way that you, you, you communicate to them. And that's vitally important. This person might learn from more like hard, you know, authoritative leadership, whereas this person is, they, they're softer. They might need more encouragement. They might be a little more insecure about who they are. Whereas this person, you can be like, hey, that sounded really bad. And they're like, oh, no big deal. You say that to this person and they're like, they're gonna cry. They're gonna, they're gonna quit the worship team. So again, number three, know your people, learn how to communicate to them individually. Number four, again, I'll reiterate this, set up clear expectations, rules, whatever you wanna call them, and goals. Give people something that they can tangibly look to and talk about that creates this unity and this commonality amongst the team to where they feel a part of something that's bigger than themselves and what they're contributing is, is 
is good and they feel as though it's important, but it's for something bigger than themselves. If there's a lack of communication and there's no expectations or goals, people are just gonna show up and they're gonna give what they have and they're gonna walk away feeling, well, I got to do what I liked. Whereas when you have those expectations and goals set up and there is good communication, they feel like they're giving something of themselves to something that it's, it's just beyond them. And last but not least, over communicate. Whatever it is that you feel like is, is important for people to know, tell them again. If, you, if it's, hey, we're doing these songs this week in these keys, you say it one time, say it again at the end of the week. Reiterate it on Sunday morning, Saturday night. You've got to make sure that you over communicate things with people because some people, especially volunteers that aren't paid, their life and their minds are elsewhere and they might miss something. Those are just a few of the things that from my experience, I've been able to learn and assess as to how to fix some of these issues. You might have a different opinion or more thoughts. Please let me know down in the comments below uh, from your experience, what is it that you've seen and, and if, if you've experienced poor communication, what are some things that you've done to help alleviate that and fix that? And lastly, I'll, I want to say this. You might think, well, wouldn't it be that, that spirituality or the lack of, of biblical truth and, um, you know, biblical pastoralship or leadership, wouldn't that be the number one killer of, of worship ministry? I would say no most of the time. And here's why. You can have a team that has no spirituality to it, but has really good communication. And that team will be the best band that your church has ever seen. And they're, you're all on the same page. You're all really good at what you do. You bring a lot to the table. Communication is, is on point. You can have all of those elements and there'll still be unity. There'll still be strong relationships. Um, there'll be a commonality and a bond there, and that team will be unified. And that team could go on for years doing the same thing over and over again. However, with the lack of the spirituality, the spiritual side of things, the impact is what's going to suffer. Yeah, the band's gonna sound super good on a Sunday morning, right? People are gonna love it, they're gonna sing, they'll raise their hands, they'll worship in their own way, but the impact and the reach of the band will be shallow if there is no spiritual aspect of things. So that's that's my response. And again, that's that's I wouldn't say that that's 100% of the time. I could see how the lack of a spiritual um, aspect in a worship team could ultimately be the demise of that team. Um, but I have, I have been at churches and been a part of teams where there was a lack of spirituality and we were really good and things were good. We were all friends, but I can tell you right now that the depth of the worship was not there whatsoever. We sounded good and people sang, but the depth, the spiritual depth, the spiritual impact was not there. But anyways, that's all I have, guys. I hope that that was encouraging and maybe just some food for thought. I don't, I have no idea, just something to equip you with, some things that we can have a conversation about. If you have any, any thoughts, please share them down in the comments below. I'd love to start a conversation about this. Maybe there's a different aspect to this, maybe that, uh, that you have through your experience. I would love to know that. But other than that, that's all I have for this video. Be sure to give me a follow on Instagram, TikTok, my Udemy course is up, all that good stuff. We've talked about that in other videos. And uh, thanks again so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.